could begin by saying the ecclesiastical dictates, which says the herbs are for the healing of the nations. In the book of Genesis, in the book of Ezekiel, in the book of Revelation, it is stated in three different parts in the Bible that the herbs are for the healing of the nations. Well, one would easily ask what went wrong. If the herbs are for the healing of the nation and God is saying it, what could have gone wrong that caused us to detour from that? This question has been answered? No. They have not been answered because the whole population of the planet is consistently and constantly using products that God did not design for healing. The herbs are for the healing of the nations. Well, if we do not want to accept that because it is too simple, but God said it, we could take it on another level. The historical level, the herbs were used by the great doctor Hippocrates, the one that was given the credit as being the first doctor that laid the foundation of medical science. Although there are history that Imhotep I was the first, but you know, the Greeks wanted to be number one and they still do. They like being number one. Well, they could occupy the position as number one and we grant them that position. Not that we have granted them the position as being the number one in medicine and that Hippocrates being the father of medicine, what did he use? Chemicals or herbs? Kind of funny, isn't it? Because in the days of Hippocrates, it was said and it is known according to his history, he cured all disease. Every disease known to man using herbs as the base of his curative energy. Well, if the father of medicine established the principle of medical science, why are we using chemicals today and we are not addressing to either one? There are any disease that has been cured with an inorganic chemical. If we want to take it higher into a scientific level, we find that the herbs contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And what does that have to do with anything? It has a lot to do with everything. Why? The composition of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen is the base for all living things. All living species, plants, animal, and men. Carbon is the base of all life. When carbon is absent, life does not exist. It is as simple as that. So now, we understand that for the body to assimilate something, it must contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen because the body is composed of such structure. We have it ecclesiastically, historically, and scientifically. There could be no argument about the three positions that the herbs occupy, showing their ability to assimilate. Assimilation, what does that mean? It means a lot. Assimilation only means something going into the body and becoming one with you, uniting. The only substance that could unite would be a substance that the body is already composed of. Scientists tell us that there are approximately 104 minerals in the soil. So the body contains the same amount. 
ingesting one or more of these minerals, the body would accept them. Why? Because there's one equal in the body for assimilation to take place, meaning that iron would unite with iron in you. Calcium would unite with calcium in you. But if I take a chemical that does not appear in my structure, my biological structure, my body, with what this substance taken going to unite with? And everything unites in the body through chemical affinity. There could be no affinity because I am not made of inorganic chemicals. So you see, it is very easy to understand this. But now, as we leave this particular point one, we find that we have to go to point two. Why? Because point two will show what is going on that is preventing us from using our senses as they are called. Out of those senses come an original thought. If we were using the original thought from the beginning, we would have never deviated from God. Because you see, God did not make rice and beans, carrots and tofu. God didn't make a cow nor a hog, a lamb nor a dog. That is the truth. If disagreed with, it is easy. There's research in the area of animal husbandry and mechanical cybernation and cross-pollination, which comes under the title of what? Plant. Plants. Plants now. Many plants exist. But how are we capable of differentiating or separating a plant that came with life and a plant that was made by God? It becomes very difficult. Why? Well, the fact of the matter is we deviated from God when he said that the herbs are for the healing of the nations and that fruit shall be for meat. If we deviated from God, it is easier for us not to see what was said, that God did not make a cow. For us to understand these things, one has to return to the original thought. When nothing of a sort existed, you see the original thought does not come out of a school of philosophy. No. Philosophy has never had to do anything with life. Philosophy never addressed to life. Philosophy is a product of the brain of some individual. But that is all right. That is quite all right. Why? Because the individual philosopher, he was totally unaware that what he was thinking was his product belongs to him but he took it upon himself to believe that what he was thinking and what he was entertaining was supposed to be sufficient for all mankind far from the truth impossible why because when god created things he created things representing a particular genetical structure oh yes he did he did that very carefully. But again, to see this cosmic or ecclesiastical arrangement, one has to have the usage or the privilege of the original thought. The original thought would come from you and only you. Now, we're going to begin to show what is meant 
that when God created things, that he placed things in a particular geography with a particular temperature consistent with that cell group. Sure, because God and only God could do such a thing. He placed the gorilla in Africa with some green leaves all around the gorilla. His environment is green. Not so for the polar bear. The polar bear is placed in Alaska with seals, fish that he should eat. And it's cold. The gorilla, he is placed with leaves that he should eat. Among those leaves, there were no bananas because bananas are hybrids. Again, from the category of industrial agriculture. So, the gorilla, like the polar bear, if we were to interfere with God, you would see something very disastrous. All you have to do is to move the gorilla from Africa and place it in Alaska. In mean upon two weeks, he'll freeze to death. He cannot protect himself from the cold. And after, if you were to succeed in helping him to live in such an environment, what about his food? He doesn't eat fish or seals. He eat plants, he eat leaves, he eat berries, fruits. And vice versa, if you were to take the polar bear to Africa, most certainly, he could not live with the temperature. The temperature is too much for him. It is impossible. It is unbearable because he was not made to live in Africa. We leave these two animals and we go to a plant. The plant we're going to select two or three to make it very easy. The burdock plant. When one appeals to the burdock plant for energy, what is the mineral in question that the burdock is abundantly supplied with? Iron. Iron is the mineral that the burdock plant has in abundance meaning that like the gorilla who selects a green leaf the polar bear selecting a seal the burdock plant selects iron is it clear of course it is clear let us go to the homo sapien are we not part of the same law are we not indebted to the same law of God, that cosmic arrangement? Or do we feel that we are exempt from such a law? Well, you know that if we take that particular position, naturally, it becomes difficult to live. Life would not be manifesting in the level, on the level that God intends for it to be. Because we are violating. Why should I raise the question about violating God? I have to. We at the Usha Research Institute for years, 20 plus now, has been trying to show what could be the reason why our leaders that has been so grateful to us, all of them, they have tried, they have tried in many ways to bring us together that we could give each other the love that is missing since we have been removed from mother country. In the Supreme Court of the United States, New York Supreme Court, I mean, a question was asked. When the African was removed from his environment 500 years ago, 
did they bring his food with him? The answer was no. No. Our food was not brought to the shows of North America. Listen carefully. For a gorilla to function at his optimum level, he has to eat what God provided for him. The polar bear, likewise. The bird art plant, the same. And what about us? What about us, the so-called black man? You think that God didn't know what he was doing when he placed black people in Africa with the plants and the fruits that was necessary to, man to maintain this level of life that we are seeking now? Now, our leaders were not helped to understand that a diesel automobile cannot run with gasoline fuel, nor vice versa. If they had understood that, or maybe they did, but it was not time. The USHA, the, the USHA research is taking upon itself the responsibility. Like all the others before, we are only adding another step on the ladder. But a little bright spot appears where there was darkness, and we jumped on it. We realize that our leaders, our healers, our spiritual healers, there was a component missing that they were unaware of. The food that is consistent with our gene, that was the component that was missing. Then we would ask, well, Sibi, who made rice and beans, carrots and cassava? Who made the hog? And how was these things made? After all, God made everything. Oh, of course, everything that is good, God made, but not everything. Because man has interfered in the last 2,000 years with that which God has made, he have added new products, thinking that it was necessary for him to do such a thing. Well, you know, when you take it upon yourself to do that, you're saying that God didn't complete his work. So what man did was to take two of God's animals and make a third. But the problem with that is that the third product, which is the one that man wanted, like in the case of the horse and the jackass, cross to make a mule. Originally, a mule, no, a jackass and a horse would never mate because the birds of one feather flock together. And that holds true for every animal, man, and plant. Chemical affinity. A zebra would never have any relationship with a horata. Why? Because another animal in Africa that looks like a horse does not exist. The horata comes from Persia. So the zebra would have to travel many thousands of miles to get to Persia to mate with this horata. But God separated them with geography and distance, ensuring that the species would be perpetuated. You know how a mule was made. True what? Cross-breeding. But very few of us knew that all the beans, the carrots, and the peas, rice, and wheat are all products of laboratory. Laboratory dictates today. Without having the usage of the original thought, one could easily be confounded. Of course, a carrot is a vegetable. 
Oh, yes? How did it become that? After all, the research that Usha has done was to investigate the plant from a biochemical level. Why a biochemical level? It is necessary. The biochemical structure of a substance tells us if this thing is good to ingest or not. The biochemical structure also teaches us the, the properties that this plant is housing or contain, which is necessary to know. We take the first. If a substance contains starch, you know that God could not have made it. Why? God could not have make, made a substance with starch because starch contains carbonic acid. It converts into carbonic acid, I'm sorry. But it contains starch and sugar. Starch is acid. Any scientist anywhere in the world would know that starch is acid. And that once entering our body, it is converted into what? Carbonic acid. What about the milk of the cow that we drink? That we so offer our children? Did anyone teach us, show us, that cow milk is also a hybrid animal and that the milk would necessarily be acid? If you were to milk a buffalo, a lioness, or a tiger, the milk of that animal would be on the alkali side. What do I mean by alkali? Alkali mean all of those substances that support life. You see, the opposite to alkali is acid. We're going to take our nose, this nose here, as the center line, a pH of 7. Why do I put 7 at my nose? Because 7 is neutral. To my right is alkali, to my left is acid. Seven is neutral. Scientists knows that too. When something has a pH of seven, it means that that substance is neutral. But if the pH is less than seven towards one, 6.9, that substance is acid. Now one should ask the question, if that is so, why would it be so necessary and compelling to ingest an acid substance knowing the damage that this substance would do to the body? So then we have to ask when did it begin and by whom? Most certainly not by God. We, the so-called black race, should not have to ask such a question. Because we were not the violators. We were being violated. We were right in the place where God placed us. We were living under these trees with fruits, with vegetables, plants, natural plants and natural vegetation. There was no rice, no beans, no hog, no chicken, no tofu. Because these things are simply laboratory products. Now that we get that out of the way, I hope, understanding that a laboratory product could not really support life, because if a laboratory product could support life, then what are we saying? We are saying that man could create life. Is that possible? It is impossible. So what is it? What is the compelling energy that is, com that is forcing us to travel on such a vibration? Oh, well, as for us, we were taken away from home 500 years ago, 5,000 miles away from mother. You know, I know for a fact that our anthropologists, historian, archaeologists, and leaders 
did not really investigate the reason why they are using so much energy to bring us together. Yet, from the time that they came to us, approximately a good 50 years, are we more united now or are we more divided? Are we healthier or are we sicker? Well, the answer would be, we are sicker and we are more divided. Telling us what? That whatever was introduced or entertained was not the real thing. It was something other than the real thing. Because the real thing which comes from the original thought is the very thing that Usha uses to bring about the reversibilities that has been accomplished. Remember, in the Supreme Court of New York, the month of, of September the 29th, a verdict was passed of not guilty on Dr. Sebi. What was the verdict? Not guilty? In accordance with what? Pertaining to what? Well, you see, the OSHA Research Institute placed an ad in the newspapers in New York that AIDS has been cured by the OSHA Research Institute and we specialize in leukemia, sickle cell, herpes, cancer, impotence, and others. This was the ad. I was asked by the Consumers Affair to remove the ad. I denied them that privilege. I said, no, unless you give me a reason. Well, the reason was not given, but what was repeated to Dr. Sibi was that he wants me to remove the ad. Well, I walk out of his office, the office of Mr. Fitzgerald on Center Street. I went back to my office. A month passed and the ad remained. On the month of February the 9th of 1987, I received a call from the Consumers Affair at 8 o'clock at night, which was a Monday, telling me or asking me why didn't I remove the ad. My answer and my response were the same because a reason was not given to the USHA research. The response to that, the reply was, I can't talk to you, I see. I said, not in the manner in which you have presented yourself. No, the ad remained. Well, whenever one of us stand up in defense of mother and self, one could easily understand what the consequences would be. Listen to this carefully. The ad was placed by the OSHA Research Institute that AIDS has been cured. Wouldn't it be just or intelligent to at least investigate to see if this individual was really doing what they claimed to do? No. That was not granted to the OSHA research and Dr. Sebi. Knowing the attitude of America, why should he expect such a thing? No, that is impossible. So, I was arrested on February the 10th of 1987. Having to prove that we cured these various diseases. But if the approach was used that everyone else has embarked on, do you think that AIDS or sickle cell would have been cured? No. 
because they are not doing it now with the entity that they represent. So why should I subject myself to such an entity or of such philosophy? It would be of no avail because then I would be giving you what everyone else has already given. And that is what? When the OSHA Research Institute opened at 616 Pacific Street, and the Amsterdam News run an article that one Miss Emma Wright was cured of sickle cell anemia. Up until that point and since then to now, no one has ever done that. Well, shouldn't the question be asked, why on both points? Why aren't they and why are we? This has to come from a fearless individual. To ask such a question, it seems. It only has to come from the original thought. We all have the right to ask questions. Why the Usha Research Institute is curing sickle cell? Not only Miss Emma Wright, Miss Akila Stroud, a little 10 years old young lady that's now living in Washington, and Steve Eugene Chaw that live in Aruba, and Antonia Gonzalez from Cuba, who was then the secretary of the Cuban ambassador in Washington. He was also treated for diabetes. And he was jumping up and down how he wanted to take me to Cuba. Well, since then I have been invited. But proving all the time that there is, there is the opportunity and there is a method that disease could be combated and reverse, meaning cure. We thought at the Usha research, using the African biomineral balance, and accomplishing all of these things that we would do in the community of the world, not only America and the black race, but the whole entire globe. A favor was being done. No, on the contrary, on two points, the pharmaceutical laboratories and America arrested Dr. Sebi. It was not in their interest. That is easily understood. After all, why should they? Why should they undermine themselves? Now, I expect no one to take such a position. But now, applying the same attitude in reference to our brothers and sisters who are more indebted to disease than any other race on the planet today, the so-called black race. Why did they take such a strong position against Dr. Sebi and the Usha Research Institute? Why did the healers, if out of 10, one of us, accomplish that which was being pursued through scientific methodology accomplishing such a quest shouldn't that encourage the others who had not the, the nine that's left to join and to improve and to raise the level of their consciousness in reference to compounds or medicines that was not done. It was not done. Why? Is it their fault? No. Is it the fault of my brother who was appreciative that he was a shepherd to lead his flock to disease? It was not his fault either. Neither was it the fault of any of our leaders. Little did we know that the fuel given to us was going to undermine all possibilities little did we know and little do we know the extent of the damage done after all let us ask the question ourselves you and me has anyone fathomed the damage that meat has done to our neurons in our brain no 
Has anyone taken the time out to see if the damage that has been done and the depth of that damage could possibly be responsible for preventing us from giving the love that we know we have to give because inherently we are loving people. And if that is not taken with seriousness enough to look back to mother, let us take a look by force. Let us force ourselves for a second and look at the beauty of it to see the equity in it. Remember what was said in point two. That God did not give the gorilla fish to eat, nor the polar bear leaves. So if God did not give the polar bear leaves and the gorilla fish, what do you think that God gave the black man in Africa absent of cows, dogs, hogs, chicken, rice, beans, carrot, wheat? What did the African eat? It's impossible for us to ask our leaders. No, that question could not come from them. They were too busy with some other stuff. Whatever that related to, because we said and we see, we experience now that division is greater now than before. I mean, when we were recently released from slavery, we cling to each other for help. We could only socialize with one another. And at that point, there were no historians or anthropologists, but we were together. We had to pause, right? Because if little after slavery, we were still close together, with all the help that the anthropologists and historians, philosophers, let us not leave them out. What did they do? Did they help? Was there equity? No, there was no equity. The meat that was given to us, that changed our whole harmonial flow, had damaged us to the extent that it made it impossible for us to see. For us to entertain an original thought, you have to be able to see. See what? Well, to many, they call seeing wisdom. Whatever that is, I never found it. I'm 60 years of age now, I never found it. Knowledge less. I've heard these terms used. But when we seek whatever it is we are seeking, this wisdom and this knowledge, how do we apply knowledge to life? And what is it? Since one is in quest of knowledge, then one should know the reasons why we pursue this particular end. I never pursued it. Because I never knew, because my friends who are scholars, they could never intelligently show me what is wisdom. Some says is reading a whole lot of books. But the people that I know that read a whole lot of books, they're sick with diabetes now. Some of them died with gout. If it is pursuing it through some religious means, then good. But what is it that one acquires and one gains? To say that, wow, I am wise. Now I am wise. Now wise man, what do you do? What makes you so wise that separates you from the others? That was never shown. Of course not. It was never shown. So therefore, we have to throw wisdom out to the window. What is it that Sebi and the Usha Research Institute pursues? Peace. The old man told me in Okotepete, Honduras, that if wisdom exists, he, he's 80 some odd years of age, he said that if wisdom exists, he could only attribute 
peace to that word they call wisdom. Ah, but now, for one to acquire peace, one has to negate all of the things that fit in the pH on the left of my nose. One cannot use those substances because they're acid. And they would prevent us from seeing because they cause cell erosion. He said that wisdom is peace. Oh, I liked it because I like to be at peace. There is nothing as tasty, as palatable as peace. When one is peaceful, one renders peace to others. It is easy. It is easy to see such a thing. Again, remembering that to see this thing, one has to entertain the original thought. And how do we get to that? What is the original thought? Well, I hope that we don't return to Africa, at least our brain, we will e easily see that our brothers lived for hundreds of years without all of the above mentioned, the rice, the beans, the carrot, the hog, and the chicken. They could not have eaten those things because those things are acid and they were not made by the Creator. And the Africans didn't have a laboratory to begin to perform what is known as industrial agriculture, plant husbandry, cross-pollination. No. But you know, as we talk of all of this, eating all of these acid substance from my nose to my left, which is the acid, could you imagine that all of our babies, that including myself that is talking to you, what kind of environment existed in my father and my mother when they conceived Dr. Sebi? Was it an alkali to my right? Or was it an acid? Well, after all, my father ate meat. He ate dead things. Upon eating these dead things, he made love to my mother. In the name of love, the result of that lovemaking is sitting here, your servant, talking to you. But after evaluating the above, am I sane? Am I totally in sync? No. No. Dr. Sidney never gave the impression to anyone that he was as sane as he would like to be. Because Dr. Sidney takes his brain and his thoughts back to Africa and he realizes that if there is any kind of interference or adulteration how could there be a product that is safe and sound shouldn't that lead us to the other question to the other side of this platform our fathers and our mothers did not eat rice, beans, carrots, hogs, and chicken. Didn't drink cow milk. So we could see easily the quality of the sperm that was given to our great, great, great ancestors from our great, great father to our great, great mother. The quality of the sperm was alkali. Our mothers didn't have vaginal discharge. Our babies were not born sick. Our brain was intact. We could think. We was hooked up to the same energy that makes a bird makes its nest. Also, the polar bear makes her den in the poles, the North Pole in Alaska. And it is warm in there. Where does she go to school to learn how to do that? Learn how the wind would be shared across this hole. And instead of it being cold, it is warm. The males could not do that. It takes the female, but they do it. 
Did she go to engineering school? Oh no, we men says in answer to that. The polar bear did that and the bird did it. The polar bear and the bird did what they did to sustain their life through instinct. Well, if that is true, that animals use his instinct, well then instinct is superior to a school of thought. Oh boy. I remember once when I wrote the paper, the gorilla versus Kant. You see, Kant was a philosopher. He was Immanuel Kant was a German philosopher. He knew all sorts of matters. But the one thing that he was supposed to know above all was the substance placed in his mouth to sustain his life. He had no idea those things were. The gorilla? Oh, yes. Right on time, a man, the gorilla. He ate only that which he was coated to eat, like the burdock plant was coated to eat the iron. Like the polar bear, his fish. We don't want to accept that there is a cosmic hookup, a cosmic marriage. We call it instinct. So instinct holds supreme. Because those animals did not deviate from the way God arranged things, the ecclesiastical arrangement. Man, he doesn't use his instincts. We are superior to that. We use his philosophy. We use his school of thought. That is so beautiful to say, a school of thought. That makes me more capable of making a decision that would be consistent and equitable. No. We are the ones that have violated. Not the black race. Not me, the so-called black man. Not the African. No. We are not responsible for making such a decision or deviating or detouring from God. That was done by someone else. We could not have done that. First, it was done by removing us, and then it was done to our brothers in Africa by invasion. So you see, if there's anyone that is righteous, I could easily claim the position. Of course, we are righteous. We have to be righteous. Why? Because we are not violators, and we are the children of Africa. Africa did not have alcohol. Africa didn't have prostitution. Africa didn't have money. Africa didn't have judges and policemen, handcuffs and jails, coins, none of that. And aren't these things the very things that we say is associated with sin? Well, these things were not in Africa. We were so sinless that our mothers and our fathers didn't wear any clothes and no one was naked. So how could we be sinful? So you see, as we look at healing, we have to understand how the disease begun. We have not done that yet. Because how many of us want to look back at Africa, to see Africa before the world disease? Very few of us. I know most certainly not in the United States because every book that I have ever read in the United States in reference to healing by white, black, or Chinese, they have in their compounds comfrey, aloe vera, golden seal, Do you think that God made these things? No, he did not. They are non-electrical. What does electricity have to do with anything? It has everything to do with everything because electricity supports life. The Greeks identify God as the God Electra for a good reason. I'm moving my mouth and my body. You think that they could be 
motion without that motion being electrical? No, brothers and sisters. Every motion that exists has to be electrical. And don't start your little brain to moving. Even the clouds that move in the sky, as they call it, they are electrical because they contain water. And there is nothing on the planet that, con that carries electricity or an electrical conductor like water. Electrician could tell you that. So what's the problem? The problem is not having the availability of the original thought. When a leader taken upon himself to lead a flock, would it be more profitable to lead a flock that is well or a flock that is sick? After all, the very Bible teaches us that if we are obedient to our Creator, He promises us longevity and health. You want to see disease? Let us visit our churches and our synagogues our temples and we see disease then after seeing disease in these places our shepherd indulges against that which God has designed for us so the flock follows him it happened to my brother isn't that frightening you're stepping on toes but should we charge the bearer of the information? No. He should not be charged. We should listen. I could not have gathered all of this information unless I had listened. Most certainly, if I had gone to the discipline as my brothers, I would not have arrived at this particular foundation. Because I would have given you what they gave you. There isn't a heel in the United States, whether black, white, or Chinese, that does not recommend the same substance. Is that possible? Remember what I said? That God gave the gorilla plants to eat, and the polar bear, meat. So there is a genetical thing that has not been considered. How could we cross these lines? without stopping and really assessing that which we're going to do. No. Could not be done. Because everything is based on philosophy. So ladies and gentlemen, this first part of the Usha Research Institute addressing pathology and the reason for disease is helping us to understand first why we are violating and why we are sick. We did not identify what the disease really is yet. We were only preparing ourselves to understand why we are not accepting the plants after it has been said. The herbs are for the healing of the nations. In Genesis, in Ezekiel and in Revelation. It sounds like this is too repetitious, but it is there for you to see. Now, using that as a platform, could it be telling us that meat really gone deep? Yes, meat has gone very deep. Deep enough to wipe the smile off our face. Many people has come to us that has visited everyone, including the spiritual healers. But everyone that came to us was eating the very thing that brings disease. So it sets off, you know, like a red light in my head telling me that there was no one that was really addressing disease. At the level that we would be comfortable and that we could love ourselves and others. No, because we are sicker now than we has ever been. We are beginning to open our eyes to see that the answer all the time was God. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Save you.